द गुड मॉरो बाय जॉन डन समरी एनालिसिस एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स द गुड मॉरो इज अ मेटाफिजिकल मॉर्निंग पोएम और ऑबेट बाय जॉन डन व्हिच वाज फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड इन हिज कलेक्शन सॉन्ग्स एंड सोनेट्स इन 1633 इट इज अ सेकुलर लव पोएम इन व्हिच ही कंपेयर्स लव एज अ न्यू रिलीजन दैट टू लवर्स हैव फाउंडेड he compares himself and his lover with seven sleepers of christian mythology the seven sleepers is a roman christian myth of seven christian children whom the roman king decius forced to renounce christianity but they remained loyal to their faith ultimately king decius ordered them to be captured and left in a cave to die in the cave the seven christian kids were trapped and they fell asleep god protected them against all odds and they woke up again 200 years later so the poem has some interesting metaphysical conceit john dun also raises the astronomical progress of his times in this poem and he mentions the exploration of the new world just like the sun rising this poem is also an obade and the poet brings the reader right into his bedroom where he and his beloved are just waking up after a calm sleep here also john dun uses conceit as the poem suggests that their love has awakened them and has offered them a new life as if they were in deep slumber before coming to know each other now when they are together and have realized the true love within it is like a new morning and the poet greets his lover and readers with good morrow which is an old manner of greeting good morning structure of the poem while it is often considered as a sonnet the poem is not in the standard form of sonnets the poem has 21 lines instead of 14 with three stanzas having seven lines each or heptate the first six lines in each stanza are in iambic pentameter with some exceptions while the last line of each stanza is a little longer the last line of each stanza is in an iambic hexameter john dun has used alliteration assonance and cicera at various places in the poem The rhythm scheme of the poem is A B A B C C which is quite unusual. The poet offers his idea in the first four lines while the last three lines of each stanza have been used to offer confirmation or conclusion. Summary of the good morrow. I wonder by my troth what thou and I did till we loved were we not weaned till then but sucked on country pleasures childishly or snorted we in the seven sleepers then. it was so but this all pleasures fancies be if ever any beauty i did see which i desired and got it was but a dream of thee john dun often expressed a strong idea of love in his poems for him love was heat fire growth or progress unity alchemy a whole living organism the whole universe and a new sacred religion Dun begins the poem right in his bedroom where the poet and his beloved just got up after a calm sleep the poet asks himself and his beloved a puzzling question that takes the reader into the poet's mind the language is old english tho means you and by my troth means in all honesty or truth the question appears after the enjambment in the second line the poet asks what kind of life were he and his beloved leading before they fell in love and became lovers the poet further asks were we not weaned till then weaned means to be influenced from a situation or early age here the poet suggests that before the two lovers met and became lovers they were not mature but childish as if they were babies sucking their mother's breasts thus before falling in love the two of them were just like infants The poet further asks that weren't the two lovers just wasting their life childishly on cheaper sensualities and immature sexual pleasure before realizing the true love. In the next line, the poet offers a strong allusion to Christian mythology. He suggests that before falling in love, they were asleep like the seven sleepers who continued to sleep for 200 years. After the Roman king Decius imprisoned them in a sealed cave, So the poet says that both of them were asleep until they fell in love. Love woke them up and love became their true religion. The poet poses his idea about love in these first four lines or quatrain. In the next three lines the two the poet affirms his assertion about love. It was so but this. The poet says that they were childish and were sleeping before they fell in love as if they were just dreaming. 
Dunn says that even before experiencing true love, he got everything of beauty that he desired, but all of it was a false, false as a dream. It wasn't real. Second stanza. And now good morrow to our waking souls, which watch not one another out of fear, for love, all love of other sides controls, and makes one little room on everywhere. Let sea discoverers to new worlds have gone, let maps to other words on words have shown. Let us possess one word, each hath one and is one. The poet concludes that they were not alive or were just in deep slumber before falling in love in the first stanza. In the next stanza, now when love has awakened them, the poet begins the second stanza by greeting good morning to himself and his beloved. So the poet suggests that love has brought them a new beginning, a new life, a new morning. In the second line, the poet asserts the wholeness of their love. There is no fear nor doubts as to both lovers e equally care each other and are true to each other. The poet says that now the two lovers see the whole world with a new vision of love as love controls all their sights. He brings upon the philosophical idea of a man is a universe in him himself. They see the world through love and their little bedroom is a whole microcosm in itself. But since their love is universal and pervades all, their microcosm is equivalent to the whole macrocosm. In the next line, Dunn uses the metaphor and suggests that since the two lovers are a whole universe in themselves, which requires a great exploration and new discoveries, it is equivalent to the exploration of the new world or America, which was in vogue during his time. Furthermore, Dunn was also aware of the new astronomical ideas of Copernicus, Kepler and Galileo that the earth revolves around the sun and not vice versa. In the 16th century, exploration of new lands on earth and alien world in the sky were gaining momentum and Dunn uses this fact in his poem. He suggests that while the two lovers are a whole universe within themselves, they possess a new world or universe of love together which is now ready to be explored and revealed. Third stanza. My face in thine eye, thine in mine appears, and true plain herds do in the faces rest. Where can we find two better hemispheres without sharp north, without declining west? Whatever dies was not mixed equally. If our two loves be one, or thou and I, love so alike that none do slacken, none can die. Dunn begins the third stanza while expressing his closeness with his beloved. The two lovers gaze into each other's eyes and they can see the reflection of each other as if they are one. This shows the strength of the bond between the two lovers. The poet further poses a question and asks, Where can we find two better hemispheres? The poet suggests that their eyes and face are two hemispheres of a single entity, a single whole circle of love. These hemispheres are specific with no sharp north. Dunn offers imagery of the earth here. Unlike earth, the hemispheres of their love world don't have a sharp north and hence it is warm throughout and everywhere. Nowhere it is cold. What the poet means is that their love is constantly warm with no dips. He further says that there is no declining west in their whole sphere of love of which the two lovers are hemispheres. The sun sets in the west, but since their love world has no declining west, their sun of love is always rising. In the next three lines, Dunn offers the conclusion that their love is eternal and it has united the two lovers as if they are one and equal with no difference. Dunn uses alchemy here and suggests that a person dies because of the imbalances of body fluids in his body. It was a renaissance idea of the 16th and 17th century. Since their love has no imbalance, it is equally mixed and it makes the two lovers united as single, hence none of the lovers can feel weak or diminish. They are eternal as their love which will never die. In the last stanza, the poet suggests that while the lovers were in slumber before they met and fell in love, but now love has awakened them and they are fully conscious as love has miraculously awakened their souls and joined them to become one. Dunn compares love with religion here again and indicates that their love is like that explained by Paul the Apostle who claimed that true love and full awakening is possible only in heaven. 
द गुड मोरो इज सिमिलर टू डंस अदर पोअम द सन राइजिंग दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड बोथ दीज आर सेगुलर पोअम्स प्रेजेंट एंड प्रेजेंट डंस थ्योरी ऑफ लव फॉर डन लव इज कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ सोल्स विच यूनाइट्स द टू सोल्स एंड मेक्स दैम होल वी विल कंटिन्यू टू डिस्कस सम अदर इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क ऑफ जॉन डन प्लीज स्टे कनेक्टेड विद द डिस्कोर्स थैंक्स एंड रिगार्ड्स